อา้าวจอ looking around at all these spooky decorations that means only one thing mm -hmm. it's almost time for another national tragedy oh, oh it's my uh, newspaper app there I got, a, got an alert I got a news alert too oh, oh yeah. Jesus right Christ right on time well it's time to start tweeting yep hashtag thoughts and prayers uh, hashtag not again hashtag pray for uh, insert your city here mm -hmm. okay Done my part. Yeah, feels good. Yeah, all right. Well, speaking of horrific things, it's time to watch some terrible Halloween films. Okay, our first movie is called Vampire Assassin. Oh, this movie's original title was Not Blade. Uh, starring um, Ron Hall, Gerald Akimura, and Rudy Ray Moore. Bitch, are you for real? Bitch, are you for real? Uh, wow. Oh, the pictures on the back are just fantastic as, we, as it stands here. We've got some really good, uh, out of focus, uh, cheap vampire fangs there. Yeah, That's like good. like a, a person's head was squished to fit the size mm -hmm. that they needed. Mm -hmm. It's a good sign. Mel Novak. We've seen Mel Novak in a bunch of different movies, yeah. but no one remembers him. All right, Derek Washington, a cop with a vengeance must travel to the dark side and become the one thing he hates the most when a botched sting operation leads to the discovery of a deadly vampire who leads the undead. So there's bees in the film? <laughs> I hope so. You said a botched sting operation. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> That's all right. Seeking out the help of one of the last vampire hunters, Master Cow. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh God. I actually fell. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. you. You do good work. Good work around here. Why do we have two copies of Honor and Glory? Uh, seeking out the help of one of his la one of the last vampire hunters, Master Cow, Washington begins his training, determined to hunt the ultimate killer. Have they said anything about vampires yet? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, there's something to be said about a man who would risk his life, his friends, his very own soul in the pursuit of the hunt. Where's my menu, bastard? What? <laughs> uh, okay, so we had one mic for this <laughs> shot. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Did this... his staff just extend? Yes, yes, just... yes, it did. This is, this reminds me of Birdman soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> jazz drums throughout the whole thing. <laughs> All right, well, we are two entirely different people, and that was Vampire Assassin, which we haven't actually watched yet. Wasn't that amazing? Oh, man. Lots of great things to talk about. Our next film, speaking of great things to talk about, hack o lantern <laughs> On Blu-ray. That's a good sign. No, it's not, Rich, because uh, Dr. Butcher MD is on Blu-ray. Oh. But why don't you tell us what happens in Hackle Lantern? All right, now that I'm completely unexcited. <laughs> Hackle Lantern, a film by Jag Mundra. When Tommy was a boy. That sounds like a disease or something. <laughs> well, yes. <You> <laughs> Yes, it take... sound, yes, this sounds like a disease. <laughs> I, have to keep, I have to take pills to keep my Jag Mundra under control. <laughs> Did you catch that from Harvey Weinstein, too? <laughs> yeah. oh, when Tommy was a boy, 
He saw his Tommy grand- Wiseau, is that what you said? No, just his Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Was a boy. When, when Tommy was a boy. Oh. Not Tommy Why So a Boy. <laughs> Why So a Boy? <laughs> Why So a Boy? <laughs> when Tommy was a boy, he saw his grandpa, High Pike. That's his grandpa's name? Yes. High Pike? High Pike. Is that one word? That's two words. No, H Y. P Y. Oh, that's the. Oh, that's the actor. That's the, yeah, I'm assuming. Okay, all right. It's a name, though. It's an actual name. I don't know if any of these are real names. <laughs> Says the leader of a vicious satanic cult, murder his father in a brutal ritual on Halloween night. Now, Tommy, Gregory Scott Cummings, <laughs> hashtag Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> is 18. I'm not convinced that any of these are real people. And Grandpa is ready to indoctrinate him into the ways of the black arts. Ah. Hashtag Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> That's I love you. When you put the thumb out, it's I love you. <laughs> oh yeah, this, this is That's Satan. the devil horns. And this is I love you? Yeah. Oh, well, maybe they mean I love you. All right. They are related. Fair enough. But as night approaches, someone dressed like a member of the cult whose face is hidden behind a devil mask, hashtag Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> begins stalking and killing people connected to Tommy. Could it be Grandpa, Tommy himself, or someone even more sinister, hashtag Harvey Weinstein, behind these increasingly brutal murders? Directed by Jack Mundra. Open House, The Jigsaw Murders. These and aren't real movies. Nothing about this. I don't, I'm not convinced this is a real movie. I'm, we'll, we'll find out. Hacker Lantern is a lurid mix of slasher giallo? Giallo. Giallo? That's, that's, that's the a Italian thing? slasher movies. Oh. And supernatural horror set in the frenzied world of satanic panic. Previously only viewable as low quality bootlegs, no shit. Now, <laughs> now viewable as a low quality Blu ray. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Massacre Video brings this distinctly sleazy hashtag Harvey Weinstein <laughs> 80s classic to Blu ray in a brand new restoration from its original 35mm camera negative and featuring revealing interviews with its producer and stars. All right. What are they going to reveal? Information about Harvey Weinstein? That's too much. Oh. There's one. There's one over the One too many. One too many. Just Hashtag like. Harvey Weinstein. Ain't you the good two shoes that gave you them guns? Was that English? Give a goo goo. Give a goo goo. Oh, Grandpa. <laughs> Boozy. Maybe that's some sort of Satanist chant. Yeah. Oh, oh my Jesus. god, that wow. magic marker. <laughs> no, Rich, that's a tattoo. Three. Yeah. And there four. you go. Okie pokie. <laughs> <laughs> That was certainly a spooky movie. Oh, I'm chilled to my bones. Oh my goodness. Um, let's talk about our third movie. Our oh third my. movie, which is Kathy's Curse. Um, the infamous Canuxploitation classic. Is this from Canada? That's a term that's new to me. I've, yeah, I don't think that's a term that exists outside of that movie. There's a tagline up here. Yeah. I sent mommy to the madhouse. I scared the butler to death. I threw nanny out the window. Okay. Now three of us are left. Daddy, Dolly, and me, me, me. In 1947, a young girl is roasted alive in a car accident. Ooh. Thirty years later, her grown brother returns to their childhood home with his mentally unstable wife and sweet daughter, Kathy. Okay, I'm with you. I'm okay. With you. So, the, his sister died in a car accident in the 40s. Her now, grown brother, yeah. Now, now her brother's grown up, has a mentally unstable wife and a child, 
And are they going to their family house? So Kathy's aunt would be the one that got burned in a car accident. No. What? Just, just, just think of something, something sweet. Think, think of like a poppy field, and rainbows and stuff. While I read, feel good about or that. Read the text. Why don't, I, why don't I take a calming moment and mm. think about all of the Hollywood executives who have not molested anyone? Okay, I'm done. Oh, all right. But when the dead ant's vengeful spirit possesses the child, it will unleash an unnerving nightmare of creepy mediums, demonic dolls, and plenty of sick 70s foul-mouthed Moppet mayhem. Bad war! <laughs> well, let's fire up the Blu-ray player and find out what Kathy's curse is. Go prime the pumps. That's how your Blu-ray player works. Oh, we have a really old one. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's gas-powered. Yeah, that's what the joke was. Hey. Whoa! It's oh. Captain Kirk! It's Captain Kirk! <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Where's your mother and your brother? Mommy's gone. She's taking George with her. Your mother's a bitch. She'll Whoa! <laughs> Off to a good start. <laughs> he was so angry, he jolted up in between cuts. Well, yep. Joanne? Your mother's a bitch! A bitch. <laughs> in the car, Joanne! Hey, did they change the fucking uh, deadhead sticker on a Cadillac? Black flag. Oh, it's a black flag oh. sticker on a Cadillac. Gross anyway, buckets. we're in a castle. Oh, what the fuck? Holy shit. We're in a, a spooky laboratory in a castle. I, I that happened. see that. Like it's because it's Halloween. It's oh. because, you know, it's a science lab, and we're here to scientifically uh, uh, determine what is a good, bad movie. But anyway, the first movie that we watched was a Vampire in Brooklyn. What's the name of this movie? Vampire, <laughs> <laughs> Vampire Assassin. Uh, also known as Dull Blade. Yes, Jay, that's uh, a great joke. That's, you know what? I came up with that joke completely on my Jay, own. Jay, he's really clever. Really. <laughs> Dull Blade. I take full credit for Dull Blade. Fuck you! <laughs> Cut to footage. <laughs> of me saying the joke. When you said it in, on, in the screening room. In the screening room. There's, yeah. there's documented evidence of me saying it. This is Dull Blade. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's why you get the big box yeah. right there. Uh, Mike, vampire assassin, what's it all about? Um, what a giant, giant pile of shit. So uh, before you even start this, <laughs> Mike, uh, that guy on the guy on the front is that Ron Hall? Um, no. Okay, <laughs> I don't think so. He, di he didn't have dreadlocks in the film. That's Ron Hall's son. Did uh, did uh, did Ron Hall have a sword? Uh, he no. Had Smaller, like not, he had nothing two like tiny that. blades that were made out of uh, copper tubing that he bought at Home Depot. Yeah. So what you're saying is he had imitation blades. Oh. Ah, yes. Well, that's exactly what this is. I mean, this is this is released by Lionsgate. Um, yeah, really, this is a movie that's shot on terrible home video. It's uh, it's four by three aspect ratio. It's it's the the bottom of the barrel trash, and they redesigned the package. I think I think Lionsgate has an entire division based on replicating nice Hollywood looking covers they to must. trick people into yeah. thinking they're watching something that's halfway decent. This of course is uh, aping off the success of Blade. Uh, this is not even the guy, he doesn't even carry a samurai sword. I mean, this movie is, is a giant pile of trash. Well, it's funny that you say it's a giant pile of trash because half the movie takes place in uh, a warehouse for cleaning supplies. For toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. For some reason, the, the film opens in the past. The past. Past it, meaning... It opens on someone's patio. On someone's patio. Yeah. They put a sepia filter over it to make it, make it the Middle Ages. Yeah. And he kills a bunch of vampires. Hey guys, can you stop shooting your movie here? We're about to have a cookout. <laughs> this is supposed to be... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that means they're dying. Okay. Because yeah. that's a lot easier than fake blood. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> He killed a bunch of vampires, but then he tasted one of the vampires' blood. Right. Does that that doesn't make you a vampire though? Uh, every universe has its own rules. All right. I need your help in stopping Slovak. More service doesn't come cheap. Let's get out of here, Derek. I smell something rotten. Since it doesn't seem like it's money you're after, what is your price? <laughs> like Blade, this main character, I don't even know his name. Karate Dad. Karate Dad. Oh yeah, yeah, Karate Dad. Uh, he's, he's mostly vampires, kind of half and half, so he's killing assassins who are there to uh, kill vampires, but he's also killing vampires. Right. But his main plot is to stop Mr. Slovak. Yes. Who is the bad guy. Played by... Played by... Mel Torme. Mel Novak. Mel Novak. Novak, Novak is Slovak. Is <laughs> Dracula, awesome. Bacula is Dracula. I actually do want to call you real quick because you say the movie opens on a patio yeah. because the movie then continues on that patio. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Quite often returns. It, we, we're, we're at that patio for the opening fight scene. The patio is definitely part of the romantic date. Like someone has a really nice stone patio that could be any set. Yeah. And so it is many sets. Many sets. There is a set. They do use a set yes. for two scenes. Well, there's like the same set for different yeah, locations. Yeah. Kind of like semi-transparent windows, and then and then it becomes at the police station set. But then right. the, the rest of the eighty percent of the film takes place in a toilet paper box <laughs> factory. <laughs> well, that's not true. We've got four sets total. We've oh, got yes. You forgot. You forgot about Gerald Akimura's house. Oh, oh I forgot he was in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a set, that was Gerald Akimura's house. Yeah, that's not a they, set. They, they shot there. Yeah. This room is filled with knowledge. That's not a library. <laughs> what? Oh, for fuck's sake. That's, that's still the I same see house. books, Josh. <laughs> that's a bookshelf. Those are books. <laughs> Jay, are we, are we shooting this in the video store? <laughs> <laughs> The library. God damn it. Gerald Akamira trains Karate Dad in Gerald Akamira's house. Ex, ex NFL linebacker Karate Dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he acts as if he's a, uh, a former football player. To his credit, he, he has some, some really sweet uh, karate moves. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like no. his form and, oh, and all nice. of his stuff. Very Obviously. Crisp. He's... I thought you were gonna say he has some really sweet emotional moments. Oh no. Yeah, you can do a supercut of all of his reaction shots in this movie, and it's like, <laughs> what do you think he's feeling? He's, he's a tabula rasa, there's nothing there. <laughs> Until... Uh, Gerald Akimura gets killed. And then uh, uh, Karate Dad has all the acting emotions in one scene. Slow back! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pick up some cases of toilet paper. Oh yeah, we're back here. And all of Gerald Akamura's scenes were, were shot like this because he was always wearing his, his black Speedos from Samurai Cop <laughs> for a lot of friends. <laughs> I've been in your movie, but I not wear pants. <laughs> The, but the important part that we need to reel back to is that <laughs> Siri makes an appearance in this movie. My name is Samantha Morris. I'm the editor of an internet news magazine exploring news most media shy away from. <laughs> is that text-to-speech for That's her holy. dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> That's your original Siri. Yeah. yeah. Hey Siri, read my script. Before she got famous. <laughs> My name is Samantha Morris. I'm the editor of an internet news magazine exploring news most media shy away from. I am from a newspaper and I'm here to interview <laughs> from, from our newspaper. Would you like to go on a date with me? Yeah. Yeah. It's like right off the bat. Uh, what I want you to do is run that through a text-to-speech program and compare Just the lay two. that over the, the video. My name is Samantha Warren. I'm the editor of an internet news magazine exploring news most media shy away from. 
Officer Washington, Officer Derek Washington of the LAPD Special Division. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh, I love it. God damn! This is important to note because it seems like at any given setup that they, any of the four sets that they go to, they have one mic maximum. So they mic whoever's the most important, like Mel Novak in the first scene and this. He's and not like, as important in a later scene, so they mic someone else. Things would not be that way if you had accepted the most generous proposal that my employer offered. I'm afraid that my turning over to the likes of you, 50%. He has a bow and arrow that's made out of paper, uh, toilet paper rolls. I don't even know. They just put it in between the two boxes. Did they? Like instead of having it get shot into a box, there's the boxes stacked on top nice. of each other, and they just shoved it in between. It's because those boxes actually had merchant, and we yeah. can't be, can't be uh, the, the owner of the factory wouldn't be happy about that. I'm gonna spill that Windex. Yeah, you don't want to puncture a bleach bottle. <laughs> Cost you us 50 cents. That's way more important than making a movie. There's that sword that has like the extra little flanges on the end on the bottom. Oh yeah. Sure, for no the, reason. Uh, <laughs> it's like a Klingon sword. Yeah. <laughs> the Klingon sword has the two little I did it. I brought up Star Trek. Oh now we can move yeah. on. Yeah, I did it first. Someone yeah. put money in the pot. Put uh, money in the no, Star Trek. But we're pot. talking about the uh, Gerald Nakamura gives uh Black Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> His name is he Karate did, Dad. Gerald Akimura gives Black Ninja a, uh, his his ceremonial daggers, and they're they're knives that look like knives, but it looks like it has the a, handle. The, the hilt is is like uh, the guard part is a, is a piece of copper tubing that's yeah. cut hollow. You can see hollow, yes. that it's hollow. It's, it's it's hot glued on, and then at some point during the production of the film, it comes off and it breaks. So he's holding the knife like this, there, where his hand is rubbing up against the blade. <laughs> It's an empty feeling, isn't it? Shallow. <laughs> His fingers are on top. His fingers are next to the blade. Yeah. On top of the guard. Yeah. He's, he's holding the guard down because oh it's not glued god, on. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. They were upside down, so the guard would fall off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you're right. <laughs> oh look. I'm gonna lie, I bleed. He won. Him at the police station, that led to the centerpiece of the film. Mr. Slovak is there. Mr. Slovak is like, police, uh, you know, it's me, Mr. Slovak. I'm a prominent citizen. I'm wealthy. You, you guys know me. I didn't do anything wrong. And then Dullblade's there and he goes, he's a vampire. And everyone's like, you're crazy, Dullblade. Let's assume there is the existence of vampires. What proof do you have to show this? Dullblade then somehow casts a spell <laughs> and is, is able to bless a cup of water to make it holy water. Oh my god, what the hell? Why are you sitting on the floor and typing? Oh, what, what is she doing? What is she doing? I, what what is doing? I oh, oh. Wait, what? <laughs> when did you get into a storage hey, unit? What the fuck? <laughs> why are you and why are you there? I, 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 they're, I, they're hiding behind bathroom tissue. Where is this? Cut to everyone in the police station runs into a toilet paper factory. They don't run into. <laughs> the camera just cuts to it. Yeah. They're just suddenly there. And they're, then, in, they're in the garage of the warehouse Mr. because there's still that Slovak conjures bad guys. Yep. Uh, what? <laughs> What? To fight the Oh yeah, the he has a magical cape. Whoa, he has a magical yes. vampire cape that he bought at a Halloween Express. And if someone shoots at him, he goes like this. Yeah. That, and it deflects the bullets. That cape deflects bullets. Summons henchmen, makes people disappear or turn into bats. Yes. That, that. <laughs> Wait, what? I thought he was he a bat. He turned the other guy around? Who is the, where is the what? bat? He turn, he, I think he turned the other guy into a bat. <laughs> He's an old guy too. A vampire turned another person into a bat? Yeah, I think old, so. Old sailor man, yeah. old, old mariner. <laughs> what the fuck? But that's where the film is, it goes, I don't wanna say it goes off the rails because it was never on the rails. <laughs> I, n the movie ends with, uh, uh, uh... The movie can't wait to end. It's true. I am what every creature of the night should fear. I am more than just a vampire hunter. 
I am the first vampire assassin. <laughs> they couldn't wait to get to the. <laughs> 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 He calls Rudy Ray Moore. Oh, we oh didn't even God. talk about Rudy Ray Moore. We didn't talk about him. There's not much to say about it. Because there are two scenes. He, he, yeah, a quick shout out to Rudy Ray Moore. We got a pair of respects. Who is Absolutely. goddamn hilarious in the Dolomite, Dolomite movies. Who is this ugly cat? He's so ugly he can break daylight with his fist. <laughs> He's in this movie briefly, and it's not even the script that's in front of him. It's his lines. It's not proper screenplay it's format. Not in, yeah, it's not in proper format. It's, it's just his lines but, word for word. By the way, I'm going to guess that was the script because they did not know how to write in proper format. That could and very well be. Entirely fair. Ron Hall did not learn proper screenplay format in the NFL. <laughs> did you say Ron Paul? He Ron, was, Ron, <laughs> Ron Paul didn't learn screenwriting format either. That's especially not in the NFL. Yeah. He, uh, uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to guess he was an XFL player. Oh, Ooh, the XFL. Not even That's NFL. a deep cut. Way back. The XFL was a professional American football league which played one season in 2001. It was operated as a joint venture between the World Wrestling Federation WWF, now known as WWE and NBC. The XFL was conceived as an outdoor football league that would take place during the NFL offseason and promoted as having fewer rules and encouraging rougher play than other major leagues. Although committing to broadcast two seasons, NBC pulled out of its broadcast contract for the XFL after the inaugural season, citing the poor viewership. While WWF owner Vince McMahon initially stated that the XFL would continue without NBC and proposed the addition of expansion teams, unfavorable demands of the league by UPN hastened the XFL's demise and the league ceased operations entirely in May 2001. I know that look. He was in a location and it was like, there oh. was like old computers. Yeah, that looked like a com computer so repair. Like, it was like a store. Like a, a geek squad guy. Like yeah. A, like, I'm, I, I repair old computers. But Can you I, imagine going to Best Buy, going up to the geek squad counter and Rudy Ray Moore's, <laughs> what's wrong with your computer? I, I, oh, I, ins I, I got some virus on my computer. Virus? What have your computer had? <laughs> what have you had? <laughs> Bitch, are you for real? <laughs> Bitch, are you for real? <laughs> I would love that tech support. Oh, that would be that would make life I would so pay much extra better. For I want Rudy Ray. We're talking about Siri. I wish there was a Rudy Ray Moore option for Siri. <laughs> Motherfucker, oh. turn right. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Fuck it. I will get an iPhone if that is an option for me. We get it. Kill the bad guy. <laughs> Take us home. <laughs> Jesus, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Was that a frog? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Sure, I have just proper elbow coverage. So the next film that we watched tonight was Hack o' Lantern by Jag Mundra. Jag Mundra. Uh, uh, Jack. Yes. Explain Hack o' Lantern, the best movie uh, of all time. Uh, what? The, the <laughs> best movie of all time. It's not even the best time. movie we watched today. Uh, well, before you get into it, I'm just gonna say right off the bat that I kind of loved Hack o' Lantern. I, but I, anyway, explain Hack o' Lantern. It was fine. It was perfectly fine. Uh, it's about Satanists, and Satanists get a hold on a young boy who turns into an asshole teenager. Not a teenager. 35-year-old teenager. I think he's supposed to be like maybe 20, 22, but he's played by a 40-year-old. Honestly. Oh, wow. hello. <laughs> Whoa! Can we help you? Like right into the camera there. That's fine. He's got a sweet Elvira poster on his wall. See, that's the, that's the tight shit. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. And a tiny bed. And a very it's tiny bed. It's his childhood bed. bed. It makes sense in the context of the movie. Yeah, but there's no way his feet don't dangle off that fucking bed, dude. I'm not saying it's not awkward. I'm just saying it makes sense that he would but never he's, expand He's beyond. also a dude who's like out in the world and he has a girlfriend and like he's doing stuff outside of the his home. His girlfriend has never stayed over at his place. I was gonna say, do you think they had sex in that tiny bed? It's your big day. Oh yeah. Okay, so Satanists are just all up in this town and the town seems to be cool with it. Now I know why mom's so worried about you spending time with grandpa. Does everyone know that grandpa's a Satanist? <laughs> like, I feel like this problem should have been solved a long time ago. But then murders start to happen in the town related specifically to one family. And there's a Halloween party. And there's sex in a graveyard. Mm. You're, you're <laughs> neglecting to mention satanic grandpa who rapes his own daughter to conceive a child who will be the spawn of Satan. Yeah. Um, this flashback to her wedding day? Yeah, yeah. Sure great. That's when he's... Yeah. Oh, we're... Oh, and the no. kid's his son. Oh, yeah. we're doing that. Oh, in the know. wedding dress and everything? Right before the wedding. That must have been an awkward ceremony. Right. But so the product of this incest lies in his basement bedroom and listens to heavy metal. Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, he's fantasizing. He's fantasizing him and Peter Rockstar. <laughs> yeah! Oh, Whoa! Whoa! Oh, he's not even fantasizing about being the lead. <laughs> well, no, he's, he's like the, the rhythm guitarist. guitarist. He's, the background, yeah. <laughs> he's like the second rhythm guitarist. He's not the singer. He's not the solo guitar no. player. He's just back there doing rhythm. He's modest. Yeah. Her laser beams from her eyes turn things into uh, spirit Halloween props. <laughs> but he's the only man. one who survives getting vaporized by laser beams. True. Because <laughs> of a voodoo woman. Oh! Oh! What? <laughs> Bye, band. What? <laughs> but the music keeps playing. And then, oh, and then she takes a trident yeah. from uh, from Aquaman. She turns, no, she turns a guitar into it. She turns a guitar into a trident. This is early DCEU crossover. Yes, yeah, it's a very is, early... Uh, uh, I mean, they've been planning for this yeah. long. Yeah, she, uh, she's going to show up in, in the Justice League films. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she stabs him in the throat. And then he wakes up, and then we realize that, oh, I guess it was a dream, a nightmare, or a fantasy. We're not really or sure. Or a premonition. Or a premonition. We don't know, and At we'll that never point, know. I think, I think the only thing we're supposed to get out of that is that he's fucked up. The whole time I've been smelling like cinnamon and, and floral smells, and I'm like, Josh, you smell lovely oh, it tonight. Could be the, it could be your beard. Yeah, but it's, I, it's a bit rum. It's, 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 it's the candle. And then I realized, all right, it's the candle. <laughs> Did you wait? Thanks, Mike. Did you rub something in your beard? Like, I did. Why? Okay. <laughs> I Jack, I condition the beard every day. You got to keep it soft and nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> it smells nice. It does. It really does. Do you guys want to smell it? No. No, it smells oh, nice. nice. It has a I'm nice flavor. Yeah, I smell that all day because it goes up here too. Oh, there you it go. has a nice odor to it. This is yeah. the That's height great. of best of the worst. <laughs> Just smelling Josh's beard. I'm telling you, all you out there in TV land. Josh's beard smells really nice. Tony, can you hear me? Go away! I'm busy! You can't live like this! <laughs> I won't allow it! Tom, it's me, Roger. 
The fact that he lives at home makes all of this so odd. Yeah. That he's supposed to be, like, isolated from the family, but they're all he's always just, like, knocking out his door. It's very weird. And he's just, like, clearly 35. <laughs> The mom is constantly looking uh, at, at her children because there's other children. There's a younger son and a younger daughter. Right. And, she's and crying she, all of the time. She, she's always so distraught. She cannot get over the fact that her dad raped her on her wedding day. No! Stop hurting Tommy! Stop ruining his life! Her dad burned her husband alive. Yeah. And raped her on her wedding day. I mean, what's the problem? Yeah. She can't, yeah. can't get So past she, it. she looks. Uh, <laughs> She looks distraught all the time, but this is a, a, a murder mystery, and I wonder who the killer is. The thing is that there are at least three uh, versions, or at least three people that have this mask, the same goat mask that that appears in, in in multiple places, and sometimes in the same frame with it's two different people. It's an attempt to throw you so. off. The she's amount of scared. shots we've gotten of her looking like out of it. Uh -huh. you know, she's totally the killer. Oh, That's my you're guess. totally right. Yep. The mask looks like Plu Kloon, the Jedi Master from the, the, the Star Wars prequels. But really, you, Jay, you mentioned that. Um, you mentioned the Star Wars? I, I don't, I never mentioned this, this the Star Wars a, this prequels. This was a segue. Jay, you mentioned that it's very possible that the murderer could be the mom. Mm -hmm. And I ruled that out immediately because the mom has a really long hair and it would be really hard for her to fit her hair inside that Halloween mask. Until the scene when we see <laughs> the mom remove the Halloween mask in a scene they forgot to film. Oh yeah, and where we don't see the mom's face in the reveal of who the killer of the movie is. It was clearly a man in a wig. Oh, it's the mom. Okay, now it's mom. Oh. <laughs> they didn't have her for that shot. That was somebody else. Yeah. It was. Yeah. That, yeah, that yeah the hair looked completely different. Yeah. Yep. They forgot. If, the... you, if you need to do your reveal of the killer, you should probably make sure you have the actress. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about... Now, let's talk about one of the... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Now, let's talk about one of the wildest Halloween parties that ever happened in bumfuck Kansas. Oh. <laughs> Where a lady takes all of her clothes off at a Halloween party. There's a different awesome hair metal band. There's a different yeah, hair metal not band. Not the same that was in the uh, the fantasy mm -hmm. early on. There's an Indian guy in drag underneath the stairs. Having He's the having the a, a party time. by himself. Why is that guy dancing by himself under the stairs? <laughs> oh, he's having a great time. Don't don't fuck with him. Look at that, look at that guy. He's very high. Yeah. He's on lots of drugs. He took some Molly. Yeah. He's just he's y'all. He's loving life. He needs to be in a good place. It takes some confidence to go to a party by yourself in drag and just dance in the corner with no one around you. <laughs> Good for him. Well, yeah. Crazy in the There barn. is a stripper who goes full nude. What kind of fucked up party is this? <laughs> right? <laughs> why, why did everybody else in the band quit playing except the drummer? Because everyone's watching the, 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 the Halloween this. strip show. These players hanging out, drummers just what jamming. Is this? What is this? Tommy was so on drums. <laughs> and this is okay by the local uh, police department. Yeah, everybody's okay with this. Yeah, uh, uh, our, our weird incest uh, kid, his younger brother, yeah. is the cop in the town, mm -hmm. and he's there to kind of monitor the party. He's just like, hey. This is, go by for the it. way, after he fucked on top of a dead body. Oh, God, there's so much to talk about. While he was on duty. <laughs> That's great. He had yeah. sex in a graveyard <laughs> on top of a freshly dug grave. <laughs> well, and then the because the, the person having sex with her in that scene is the brother of the Satanist kid. Yes. And he also has a sister. Yes. And the sister is the one who set up the younger brother with right. that girl. So, tell me. Where did you guys do it? Right there. Oh! He's taking her? <laughs> what? Why would you do that? <laughs> what? 
It's not enough to just tell her. <laughs> we fucked right there. Look, yeah, your brother? Your, your little brother? Yeah, fucked him. <laughs> you can still see his ass mark <laughs> in the dirt. Jesus. No, the only reason this is happening is so they can discover right. well, the yeah. back door. So Do you want to smell it? What a weird <laughs> motivation to get them back out here. Yeah, we've got two two things in that scene that just completely fuck with my brain that no person would do. It's like, oh, my brother, you fucked him, right? Show me where. And then she does. Uh, on top of the dead body of and your the, boyfriend. Yeah, whoops. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Awkward. The dead body doesn't matter in this scenario. That's where I fucked your brother. <laughs> Like, show me where you fucked my brother was the weird part of that. The, these two, the, the, the daughter and her friend, they were very close. If you recall, That's, the, the, the daughter was masturbating in the bathtub. That's true. Her friend came in and put a rubber spider in. That's true. It's awkward. <laughs> How good of friends are you with this lady? <laughs> Tight bodies. This is normal. Yeah. And she's like, ah, rubber spider. <laughs> here's a here's a here's a bath towel. Yeah. Let me put your bath towel around you. Isn't it weird that you're nudie? That's like, the way I they roll in Davenport. We're 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 uh, neglecting one very important aspect of the movie, and that's the fact that uh, at the Halloween dance party there is someone uh, dressed as a salad. <laughs> yes. That's if that's the that's most weird or disturbing thing in the film, then we have a lot more to talk about. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's, that's uh, uh, continuing with that, talking about Halloween in general. Mm. This movie has a wonderful, spooky Halloween atmosphere to it. Yeah. There, there's lots of great, uh, I mean, the opening scene of the movie, we see a pumpkin get smashed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. Tommy, we have to wash that. But mom, I like the taste of blood. Grandpa says it's good for me. Grandpa. Oh. Yes! <laughs> yes! Uh -oh. Fuck your satanic pumpkin! But there's there's lots of good Halloween stuff in this movie. This is a very Halloween heavy film. <laughs> So we need to talk about Grandpa. Let's talk about all the voices that Grandpa has throughout the years. He, yeah. There's some, uh, there's some Tom Waits in there. If you know what's good for you, you'll get his little butt home, and I mean right now. Uh, it seems like he's doing uh, the Tim Curry Pennywise from It. Yes, the there's miniseries. some of that. And Grandpa's got something very special for you. And then the next scene, he's doing like a southern, uh, southern drawl. Like a southern, not, not like a southern bell, like a female. Yeah. We don't like. Trespasses here. So we're watching this movie, and he's the most compelling thing about the movie. And it's By a, it's, far. it's a weird, it's an odd, it's an odd movie all, overall. But like he was con consistently compelling. So you're gonna protect the town tonight? I'm gonna do my job. I say, damn your job. If it means your grandpa can't have any fun on Halloween. But this seems like the kind of thing where it's like he was in this and that was it. Right. It seems like that kind of performance where he's like some local guy yeah, that they he, put in the movie. He does not feel like a career actor. Yes. And yet that is what he is. But he's in fucking Blade Runner. Yeah. You ever buy snakes from the Egyptian, Taffy? All the time, pal. That, well, and in here he is chewing the scenery and the he is the hallmark of this movie. But he killed my boyfriend, Grandpa. You have intruded upon the ceremony of blood. But, but yeah, no, that, that's, so it's, it's, it's uh, a series of weird performances. It's, it's him, it's Tommy, and it's the mom. Uh, all the other actors in the movie are terrible, but those three are unique and weird and interesting. And that's what holds it's the movie together. Yeah, it's really enough to get the movie by. Uh, well, and I guess that's one of my big problems with Hack o' Lantern. <laughs> How many times I'm, have you said that? <laughs> no, and I'm sorry to like get too critical about Hack O' Lantern. The best movie ever? The best movie ever. But as it does build a spooky theme, it has three kills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe, maybe three kills, maybe four. It's not how many kills, Jack. It's, it's how terrible and awkward and pointless they are. <laughs> <laughs> you know those men like them hard and firm. So tighten it up. Is he 
What? What? Strangling her Killing back? Her with a corset. Yeah. That doesn't. That's that not doesn't how make that any sense. Okay, that'll do it. Okay. Well, the knife will do it. What? That was odd. It's all fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Have you cracked Rich? <laughs> Rich is done. <laughs>So our final film oh of the night was Kathy's Curse. And I don't even know who hasn't... Josh. Josh. No, I'm... Kathy's Curse. Oh. What is Kathy's Curse about? Well, Kathy's Curse is about a curse that Kathy has. <laughs> do we know why Kathy has the curse? Yeah, I don't know. I'll that, get, well, I'll it's do a it. whole thing. I'll get into it. It's a whole thing, Jack. Your mother's a bitch. A, a, a fella and his daughter have to get into a car and drive because her mother is a bitch. Your mother's a bitch. And wait, 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 wait. You, yes? Pull that back a little bit. Go ahead. They, ne they need to get into a car. They need to leave the house. Yes. Why is that? Because the mom was a bitch. bitch. Are we sure about this? Your mother's a bitch. I'm sure we've cut to it like 15 times by now. <laughs> Your mother's a bitch. Because it's, it's, it's absolutely the best line in the movie. Your mother's a bitch. The delivery, the well, mustache. It's, it's not just the line, it's the editing. It's yeah. so fucking awkward. Yes. Where it's like he's leaned down, he's talking to her, and then it cuts to his reverse, and all of a sudden he's standing up, and he's like, Your mom's a bitch! Mommy's gone. She's taking George with her. Your mother's a bitch. <laughs> and it's like, it doesn't match at all. at all. Everything is wrong. Yeah. So they get into the car, and they're chasing the mom and the son, apparently. What? It was what? a bunny! Father, there was a bunny in the road! That, that bunny's bunny a bitch! bitch. <laughs> <laughs> What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> she didn't want him to hit the bunny. The inciting incident? Oh, oh my no! god! The entire plot of this movie hinges on the fact that the daughter's like, don't hit that bunny in yeah. the road. Uh, but so that's your prologue. Oh, there you go. Come so that's your prologue. That's Jack. Jack means and all those. Yeah. Do not, I don't I have any more of these. Yeah. Just yeah. any yeah. other. Give him the... Yeah. Bring out the hall. Your mother's a bitch. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like Thank you, Irish! Jay, get some other one. <laughs> Left the girl to sit at the house for the dad to discover. We talked about this to him in the viewing, don't we? No. <laughs> I'll get there, I'll get there, give me time. Now, I have a serious question. Okay. Yep. What were we talking about? What are you talking about? Listen, George. This is getting pretty ridiculous. You know and I know that I've had a nervous breakdown, right? Uh, like 15, 20 years later, whatever. Uh, the, the boy child w who was with his mom obviously didn't get into a car crash and so has survived and has inherited the house where they all lived. The brother of the girl whose mom was a bitch. Your mother's a bitch. And, and we did not meet Gordon no. as a child. Absolutely no. not. Or not the mother all. who was clearly a bitch. <laughs> Your mother's a bitch. And so he moves in with his uh, very unstable wife and his very sweet daughter, who is extremely curious and wanders up into the attic where there's a creepy doll and a creepy picture. And then she ends up possessed by the- Pazuzu. Uh, I am Pazuzu. She ends up possessed by the- Pazuzu. Uh, I am Pazuzu. She ends up possessed by the girl that died in the crash. Wow! <laughs> that sounds a string, but that was great. <laughs> Graham is flying out the window. And that's basically what's going on through the rest of the movie. Everybody eventually dies except for her dad because dads are okay. Everybody else is terrible, that's, particularly women. That's the weird thing is that she develops this, because uh, the dad at the beginning is like, your mom's a bitch. Your mother's a bitch. And that's like his whole thing. Yeah. And so the daughter has this idea that like all women are bitches and they're terrible. 
the, so, the, the dead daughter, right? Yes. Uh, so Kathy is like, at certain points in the movie, where she's like, fuck you, whore! Oh, bitch! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Dad! Oh. Yeah! Bad whore! Oh! Fat <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> dried up whore! Fat dried up whore! But so, so, so the rest so, of the movie is just uh, things happen. Yeah, it's, about, it's it's Kathy trying to weed everybody out of her house apart from her dad. And then there's there's an old uh, there's Mick Fleetwood, and uh, he gets drunk all the time and hangs out with Kathy because apparently she's ha he's having a blast. This is very strange. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's gotta all, get him going. He even didn't even by, drink any of it. Even he's by really horror calm. movie standards, this is weird, right? Forcing an old man to drink? Mick Fleetwood mm. is an important character. <laughs> uh, because, like, he doesn't get drunk just to get drunk. Kathy gets him drunk. Oh, God. Oh, what the fuck? There's a snake in the drawer. <laughs> Why is there a snake there? <laughs> what? Is he paralyzed? Yeah, it's yeah, like he's frozen. Right? Yeah. Like she did. Oh! That. Still moving. Is he frozen out of fear or booze? No, oh. she did no, that. No, his feet are moving. She's making him. Oh spiders. my gosh! Fuck that. Well, like, we can't tell if he's scared of the the snake and the tarantula. He gets a little kind of shaky when the tarantula is yeah. here at the end. He's oh. like, no. But then the, the scene actor. awkwardly ends. Don't you like it, good old Paul? Uh, what? Uh, that, that's a great question, Jay. I guess the scene is over now. That was a weird place to... <laughs> I really want to make note of what Jay just said, the phrase that Jay just used, which is, the scene awkwardly ends. <laughs> that's the whole movie. That happens pretty much every scene in the movie. There's an awkward fade out. Are you going to tell me what went on here? And yeah. it's like, oh, cut to commercial. Eventually, like, she's managed to kill just about everybody until, except for the mom and dad, and the mom figures out how to stop the curse. The end. She rips the, the, the stitches out. The yeah. Close the eyes of and the they doll. No! Oh! Oh, kinetic powers. Sweet! Wait. Everyone's an art critic. <laughs> <laughs> There, it's all done. No, it's, it's not. not. Totally not what? done. <laughs> There's several more pieces, Grandma. All these men are lazy bitches. No kisses! So you're, you're talking about a theoretical demonic possession of a doll. And, or, or not even a demonic possession, the possession of the spirit of a girl who died in a fiery car crash who doll. somehow wants to kill people. Yeah. Out of vengeance or Doesn't anger? Doesn't necessarily want to kill people. This, okay, all right, all right, all right. This you know, movie. You know what? 1970. It's all about mother's a bitch. 1970 something. <laughs> 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 yeah, mother's a bitch. Yeah, this your mother's a bitch. Who knows? Your mother's a bitch. There, there is that. Like you, you said, I, I expected it to be batshit crazy. Yeah. It, it. There is this line, and it's a, it's a pretty thick line. It's not a thin line. Mm. It's a thick line, where movies are batshit crazy to where they're fun or where they're like uh, make sort of make sense and this one was like on that line yeah where it's like wait what yeah. this doesn't this sort of makes sense but then that, that's where it falls sack lantern fell in that in that region for me so both of these two movies were like weird but not Weird enough to where they fell off the edge, to where they're crazy and fun. Yeah, it's like it's like eh, it falls into that that terrible, terrible area we call frustrating. I disagree. I disagree. I honestly, I feel like Kathy's curse made it far enough to you? this side the of the line. line. Would you call these two movies frustrating? No. 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 I wouldn't call and either of them. You know what? Actually. This one's frustrating. Here, yeah. Yes. And you know, Mike, here's here's the part is this I This one's will call clear them, as day to me. These are frustrating. Ooh. I will call it Y'all wrong. Were you in your room when Mary was in there cleaning? Yeah! Oh my god. How did she vanish? Oh, 
So how does that make sense? Uh, it has nothing to do with possession. You made me angry. I saw you. Do you hear me? I saw you there when Mary. What? Where does demonic come in to the to to the area with Kathy's curse? There's no demonic. What are you talking about? The the fucking box says demonic. Where where is well, the? That's the box. No, that's a, exactly it's, it's, uh, exactly. There's a little girl no, who got burned Mike. up in a car. Suddenly right. and she's, she's possessing she's a doll possessing and doing doll. demonic things. She's a right. ghost. But why is she so angry? Why is she killing elderly women? <laughs> because her mom's a bitch. <laughs> Your mother's a bitch. <laughs> That's it. Don't, don't make it. no fucking of, sense to me. The entire no. plot of the movie hinges on the fact that the little girl's mom is a bitch. Yeah. Well, if it isn't the great medium herself. Medium, I'd say extra rare piece of shit. <laughs> it's a basic demonic doll possession. Yeah. Look, there you go, demonic. It ain't possessed by a demon. It's, it's possessed, possessed by, by the girl, uh, the ghost of a little girl who died in a car accident. Right. So it's a and ghost. So, so it's a you ghostly understand doll. It. Oh, no so it's a demonic possession. It's that a ghost that died. said demonic. It's a ghost that died under unceremonial circumstances That's that doesn't what? have unfinished business in the world. Who did? Well, that's Kathy, man. Bitch, Laura ain't no demon. She's a little girl. <laughs> there ain't no demon in this film. But you still understood it. But there yeah. ain't no demon. But that's the fault no, of the box. You can't, you can't get pissed off at that. That bitch right there said demonic. A little girl can be a demon, yo. Go on, you filthy female cow. Make us laugh. Well, she just has unfinished business. No! She's a ghost. She's a ghost. She has unfinished business and she possesses sure. Kathy. To, in order to eliminate all females and naysayers, yes. which apparently will finish her business. Fair yeah, enough. I don't know. <laughs> it's lit there is none. Literally, <laughs> it's just her being with her daddy. That's why it's frustrating because she wants to be with her dad. She wants to be with her dad. It's a plot no that you can understand, but it's not so fucked up that it's funny. It's fine. Your mother's a bitch. The thing is, I think Kathy's Curse is the kind of movie that can get by on atmosphere and shock. Yeah. It is like, it's shocking to hear a little girl say, you fucking fat whore. And that's, it definitely, that's a, like. It made it, bugs show up when yeah. a drunk guy is trying to that's drink his a booze. Huge, that's a huge crutch, but it gets it by on that crutch. Remember when the fucking mom had leeches on her? You, yeah. got, you, got, you got a movie like The Exorcist where the little girl says horrible things. Your mother sucks cocks in hell, Karis. Well, but, that but, was too but Kathy's curse is not as good as The Exorcist. No. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if we properly explained any of these. No. This, this is a I disaster. This night has been a disaster. This castle is awful. Uh, the, I, I'm going to blame it on the castle. I'm going to blame here? it on our environment. I'm going to fall apart. I'm going to blame the movies. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Josh, best oh, of the worst. By a country mile, it's Kathy's Curse. That movie had atmosphere to spare. It had. Uh, I didn't give a shit about the plot holes, where I gave a shit about the plot holes in the other movies. So, yeah, it's Kathy's Curse. Mike, <laughs> best of the worst. <laughs> Oh, uh, my pick for best of the worst is Vampire Assassin. <laughs> Are you <laughs> damn it? Are you me? <laughs> you fucking asshole. Hack o' Lantern and Kathy's Curse. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful uh, res restoration film prints. Yes. I appreciate that. This is true. Uh, marvelous little moments of weirdness. But it was just too spread out, too diluted. I cannot <laughs> fucking believe you. Vampire Assassin uh, had some great moments in it. What? Some great fight scenes. What no. the fuck are you talking about? No! I love- What are you talking about? I, listen, I grew up on Len Kamazinski films. And, and I, I enjoy a good, a good bad kung fu oh, B-movie. And, what a giant, giant pile of shit. What are you talking about? No, I'm not, I'm not doing this to be a contrarian or to, to cause an upset. I don't doubt that at all. I just, I'm just don't saying, understand if, it. If I, if I were to pick, I don't get it. If I were to pick which B movie I thought was the best, 
and that I enjoyed the most. <laughs> Vampire Assassin <laughs> has the most crazy B movie magic. Giant, giant pile of shit. Rudy Ray Moore. Uh, Rudy Ray no more. He wasted in his two <laughs> scenes. My, my, my vote, oh, no. my vote is Vampire oh, Assassin. This movie is a giant pile of trash. <laughs> oh my god. I don't even. Bitch, are you for real? Uh, my vote for best of the worst is Heckle Lantern because I legitimately enjoyed watching the movie. It was bad, but I liked it. Uh, it, it had lots of fun Halloween atmosphere. It had a story that was relatively interesting with the Satanism and the incest and all the weirdness. Of course, Hackle Lantern <laughs> is the easy choice for best of the worst. Okay, so Jack, easy. best of the worst. Easy. And then for fuck's sake, you guys. <laughs> Fuck you. But Vampire <laughs> Assassin. We need to have a conversation. <laughs> Pick your own best of the words without <laughs> judging why. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so so by votes alone, Kathy's Kathy's choice wins. No! No! Hack no. Oh, sorry, Hack a Lantern. <laughs> sorry. By sheer votes alone, Hack a Lantern wins best of the worst. It's fucking absolutely. Two to one and one. Yeah. Two, yeah. One, one, um yeah. Are we destroying? I want to destroy Vampire Assassin. I, of course, vote I'm in the negative. I, I say yes. But can I say one Vampire thing? Assassin. Jay, this film comes from a period of time in, <laughs> in the late 90s. A, a when couple, the little this guy, was not a pioneer of anything, When though. the little guy could make a ripoff of Blade no. with his own video. <laughs> Are you saying that the little guy couldn't make a rip off of Blade right now? So we're going to destroy uh, Vampire Assassin. The good thing is we have two copies, so you go ahead and you destroy it all you want. Oh. Have another copy. All right, so we're going to destroy both copies of Vampire Assassin. Send more copies of Vampire Assassin. <laughs>